So uh, I'll basically uh, start uh, describing a little bit how we um, arrived at the product called CloudUp. So actually, uh, my name is Guillermo Rauch. I'm the CTO and co-founder of a company called LearnBoost. Um, we actually presented here a couple of years ago. Uh, it wasn't me. It was my um, co-founder and one of our community people. Uh, we were uh, building, at the time, uh, education software. So our goal was to basically revolutionize the classroom through actually real-time collaboration. So we actually set out to do things like attendance and lesson plans and a bunch of features that were uh, related to the day-to-day -day work of uh, teachers and students, IT admins, everyone that uh, did work with a computer at the school. And what we found out was that actually it was really hard to compete with every single product out there. We were really prolific, all of us, the, uh, the early uh, founding team, we were all engineers that had like dozens of projects, dozens of open source contributions. Uh, we created a bunch of the most popular Node.js modules out there, one of the fastest growing um, open source frameworks. But, and what we found though was that uh, one of our most successful features was lesson plans. So unlike every other feature that we had in our um, education product set, uh, it was one that you could implement without replacing all the other software at the school. So it sort of fit, found its way to sneak in. Teachers were able to create lesson plans and share them, uh, embed them on their blogs, link to them, without actually replacing too much of what they already knew or were familiar with. And they were actually able to merge media together very effectively. A lesson plan wasn't simply just text. It was the idea that you could combine, for example, a YouTube video. Uh, so in that sense, we weren't competing with initiatives like Khan Academy. We could leverage the growth of new content producers and give, for example, the teacher the ability to be creative in which ways can you combine media together. So it was sort of a combination of finding our sweet spot in terms of entering the market, uh, finding the right features that we were specialists in. In this case, we're really good at media. We're really good at real-time collaboration. We're really good at creating really snappy experiences. And we ended up pivoting to a product that is a lot more simple and actually available to for everyone to use. It's what we call CloudUp. Uh, I'm going to show the video really quick. Oh. <laughs> that happened to be the first scene, yeah. So um, I'm going to show you a quick few demos of uh, this idea that you can combine media together uh, from different sources or even upload them from your computer. So for example, um, you would have a set of videos here. Some of these come from YouTube, some come from Vimeo, some are uh, uploaded by yourself. Um, we actually focus a lot on the consumption aspects of media. When you upload a video to CloudUp, we want to make sure that the, per the person that you share that link with can see exactly what you were seeing. No download, no conversion, no uh, unzipping, no, no signing up for an account even. So you just share a link. Some of the uh, aspects that the video highlighted was you could uh, link on it uh, on Twitter, you could email it. So in that sense, another lesson that we picked up from Nervos was that 
we don't really have to compete so much for how we get our product across. So we're not replacing how people talk, for example, which was actually one of the previous iterations of the product was we wanted to solve everything, chat and files, collaboration. We wanted to go after the world, but we found a lot more success in being a little bit more humble in that regard. I'm also going to show an interesting aspect of, uh, I guess, the real-time slash collaboration technology, which is that um, you can upload something and then share the link even before it's done uploading. And we do that by synchronizing, like I think some of the people here have uh, mentioned, by synchronizing objects uh, in real time. And that's really handy when you're uh, uploading something that's, uh, for example, a large video. Um, a lot of media professionals work with this. You're going to see, for example, if I go to my Mac app here that we created, um, we're syncing the file progress in real time. So if I'm going to share this link to someone, um, for example, I'm going to open another browser here, you're going to see that this state uh, is perfectly synchronized. Uh, and then uh, when that person that you're sharing with or classroom or whoever you're sharing with gets it, uh, they can immediately start consuming the content so it's perfectly synchronized. Uh, we also do a lot of uh, treatment on what you upload. For example, if you upload a Photoshop file, we convert it in a uh, format that anyone will be able to consume even if they don't have Photoshop installed. Um, for example, for videos, what we're doing here um, is uh, processing in real, uh, in real time in the back end so that it gets transcoded in a way that you can consume it on mobile phones so that it's not such a large file. Uh, so you're going to see that a thumb comes in. That's because of a transcoding job finished in the back end gets pushed out to the consumers and now this is a video that you can uh, play on every browser. Uh, it's faster to load on mobile devices and, it, and like we said, it just allows you to consume that content anywhere, no software downloads needed. All right, Guillermo, I'm going to have to stop you right here. This is super fascinating, but let's open it up to questions. Sure. All right. So what's the ed educational aspect of this? It looks more like a YouTube or... Great question. So um, what we found actually with the success of uh, Cloud, especially in the early tests, was that anyone can use it. So teachers were finding that the lesson plan aspect that inspired us was even a lot more effective here. Because, for example, if you upload a Word document, uh, let me see the head one. Well, I have a PDF, but uh, you'll get the idea. So, uh, for example, combining a PDF, which could be homework, for example, uh, with a script uh, so that you can hack on your homework with um, a movie or uh, Adobe Illustrator file. So, uh, how we're not now constraining it to a teacher specifically, but we saw a lot of success in their daily workflows because now more than ever, it involves a lot of different media and a lot of different files and things that are not even in their computer anymore. So you can um, get uh, some data from Wikipedia, for example, and we make sure that we copy it. We also produce a point in time snapshot so that that data is never lost, even if it changes. So something that happens a lot is you, you're like trying to write down what the lesson plan is going to be, and you link to a website that, that next week is a 404. Happens a lot with uh, news websites. They change over time. So we actually give people the capability to capture what that website looked like in a snapshot, uh, which also is ex incredibly useful for teachers that are, uh, for, for example, uh, archiving their uh, lesson plans for next year or even 10 years down the road. It's so good, there's no questions. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you're cloning data off of websites, doesn't that get, 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 get you into uh, public, legal issues? Yeah, so he's asking if we're uh, cloning data from other websites, does that get us into legal issues? I guess there, we take the same stance as Google, uh, Google's cache. Uh, if we can access the content, meaning there's no password wall or paywall, like it happens with the New York Times, uh, it means that it was publicly accessible, and we create a cached copy. If uh, someone, like the website creator, asks us to remove it, we'll gladly do so, especially if it gets shared online. Otherwise, it's your private storage. A an important aspect of CloudUp is that everything is private until you decide to share it, which is a, a much better approach for things that are sensitive, 
or um, things that you might, for example, might not want to post to Facebook, like I have wedding photos and, or uh, your newborn's baby photos, uh, and you want to decide specifically who gets that link, you're always in control of what you're sharing, uh, and we don't make decisions for you. Exactly. So maybe I'll take the last question, if that's okay, everyone. Yeah. Um, so and now that you guys are part of WordPress, um, is there a, a vision to in integrate those two products, or will these stay pretty separate for the future? Uh, actually, before we even launched, um, we had this idea that we're doing media management really, really well, even better than most available applications out there. And I think it's very synergetic that we joined WordPress, especially because they're dealing with a lot of media but also they're dealing with the challenge of composing that media into blog posts, articles, and categorizing it and publishing it online. So we've found a, a common ground where it makes a lot of sense for us to integrate these features and more importantly also the technology. Um, we've built a lot of technology for making sure that as soon as you do something, you, it reflects in real time on what you're seeing. We call this uh, optimistic UI. Uh, for example, if I'm gonna delete this, because I don't, I don't want to see it anymore. Uh, it's going to go away immediately, even if from the server it's not gone yet. Uh, and the same goes, for example, if you want to stamp a password on a document. Once again, I'm going to show what the visitor uh, or like the person that you share with would be on the this left side, um, and the owner would be on the right side. <laughs> Something we allow you to do is to set a password um, if it's if you need an extra layer of security and to set a hint. So you see how in real time we actually disabled access to that document for the, for the people that were seeing it. So that sort of like breakthrough technology is one that we want to incorporate and bring on to like, uh, right now WordPress has like 20% of, uh, of the internet. So we're really excited about making an impact that's far greater than uh, what we could have done on our own with Cloudup. All right, thank you Guillermo. Thank you for presenting Cloudup.